Hello guys, what is up? I think today I'm gonna make a really quick video about this year's E3 because it's become kind of a tradition that I make a prediction video or like an expectation video about the E3s every year. Uh, and then afterwards it's good fun because you can look back at the video and see what of the stuff that you actually talked about came true, was confirmed and so on. So I'm just gonna go through some of my thoughts and share them with you guys and see whether you guys have other thoughts. You can leave that in the comments, obviously. What do you guys expect for this year's E3 2014? Let me start off with Nintendo. Oh, that's my chair making noise. Let me see. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So, um, Nintendo kind of canceled their presentation, their press conference at this year's E3, same as they did last year, and it seems to become kind of a normal thing that Nintendo doesn't do a press conference anymore. I have to say I'm a little bit sad about this because I enjoy every press conference. I mean, last year you had Ubisoft doing one, uh, kind of instead it replaced the Nintendo one, but uh, still obviously Nintendo is such a unique player in the game that I would love to have seen just a press conference from them and how they develop and where they are up to with the Wii U. I think they don't do it because they just think E3 is such an over-pollution of information that even you do a press conference, it's just run over by all the other information and you gain basically no momentum uh, in return for all the money and the time and the effort that you invest. So probably they're going to do their own thing in a month from now or something like that. They've done that in the past. So that's quite of interesting. Probably the most positive part of having no Nintendo press conference is that we won't have to see Reggie Phil's face. I'm sorry, Reggie, but your face is just not nice on stage. And I don't like you on stage. I don't like to look at it. And uh, I don't like the way you present stuff I mean, Nintendo, for me, is a Japanese company, so get Japanese guys on stage to let them talk about the games they make. I know it's Nintendo of America and so on, but honestly, I love it much more when these Japanese guys talk English and they kind of convey the games to me. Even it's hard to understand sometimes, but it's just so much more fun and it's more authentic and it just speaks much more to the brand of Nintendo. So happy, though, that won't happen, but... Um Looking at the Wii U, right, which is the big player of Nintendo last year and this year, obviously the last 18 months it's been a major fail and everyone kind of nearly laughed about the Wii U. Uh, however, I feel that at the moment with the two other consoles, the PS4 and the Xbox One being out, there has been a slight shift in, in that dogma, in the sense that the Wii U now is the only console on the market that actually has games that are worth buying the console for, if you know what I mean. Like everything that's out on Xbox One or PS4, nearly everything can be purchased on the PC or on the other uh, console. So you can't buy Mario Kart 8 on anything else but the Wii U. You can't buy Super Mario 3D World on anything else but the Wii U. So it's interesting to see how Nintendo is kind of playing their Wii U card in the long run and now you can actually see it paying off a little bit and the Wii U is becoming a little bit more interesting in the long run. So that's that's kind of interesting. However, in regard to what they might show this year, I think they are kind of hoping to have this one game out that will turn the console around and that will turn it into like a proper selling product. And that probably would be a Zelda game or a Pokemon game. We've seen Zelda in the past. The Like last year they showed a bit of 3D animation, but they never said, oh, it's a new game, it will come out. I think they didn't, you know, correct me if I'm wrong in any of that stuff. But I think it was more like a kind of a mood animation that didn't really announce a proper game with a release date. So if they would bring out a proper Zelda that looks really good, that looks as good as Mario Kart 8 does on the Wii, that would definitely push the sales ahead. Likewise, a Pokemon game, if they have a proper 3D Pokemon game that just looks amazing, that works, that has the whole charm of Nintendo games, all the love to the detail, if they would announce that this year, that would definitely also push the sales and get people more excited about their console. However, I don't know where they're going. And like I said, they're not going to have a press conference, so it will all be kind of maybe announced a month later, or they will just announce it kind of on the back of their stand, because they will have a stand at E3 where you can go and you try out Wii U and you can play the latest games. So there might be some announcement there, and then again, maybe not. It's very hard to predict where Nintendo will go at this year's E3. Coming to Microsoft and the Xbox. Um, obviously, 
Don Metric is gone, which is a good thing because he was the kind of brain behind all the always on thing and the the lock console and the only connect bundle thing. And all this has been broken out open now since he's gone. There will be an Xbox One without the Kinect, there will be less console logs and I think they kind of went away from the whole TV media entertainment thing and talk much more about gaming only, kind of like Sony did with the PlayStation all the way. So that's a good thing. However, I feel that Xbox or Microsoft are really lacking the games that Nintendo has, you know. If you have a Mario Kart 8, it's an incentive to buy the console for that. What is the incentive on Xbox One? I really don't know what it is. I've, a lot of people thought it might be Titanfall, and also I think that Microsoft thought it would be Titanfall. However, seeing how Titanfall has developed in the last months, there are much less people playing it. It's definitely not living up to, you know, what Call of Duty brought to Xbox. Uh, so that's a bit of a problem. I think, again, they're going to make a very big standpoint in this year's press conference that they are steering away from TV, they're steering away from Kinect. But if it's not Titanfall that is the unique selling point for this console, what is it? And I want to see it this year. I want to see in the press conference what is the unique selling point for the Xbox One if not Titanfall, where are the exclusive games, right? And as much as I hate exclusive games, because I'm a PC player, I want to play everything on every platform, I understand that they're gonna need these games in order to push their console out, in order to sell more units and make it a bigger success. So I think that's the challenge for Microsoft this year. What's your unique selling point? What are you gonna do to draw people into buying your console? And it's definitely not TV and it's definitely not Kinect. We have seen that. Jumping over to Sony and Sony with their PS4 obviously have won the sales war. They have sold many more units as Microsoft with their Xbox One and uh, they are a step ahead. But now it's all about maintaining that position. Sony will have to show loads of games that look good, that people want, that are exciting. At the moment, they are, again, the same as on the Microsoft front, no system selling games. There's nothing where you would say, oh yeah, I have to buy a PS4 because I can only play this game and it's the game I really want. So again, it sheds a really good light on Nintendo with the Wii U because they really ticked that box. They have these games that you can't get anywhere else and they don't intend it to bring it to any other platform. So what's the system seller for the PS4. I'm not really sure. They're gonna have to maintain their position by showing loads of exciting titles, exclusive titles, kind of same as Xbox One. So I'm really, really excited to see what they're gonna announce and hopefully not only second parts of games that we've seen in the past. I wanna see new ISPs. If you remember, I think it was 2011 when they announced Watch Dogs. Jesus Christ, that just was like a huge bang in the end of their press conference, right? They were like, and there's one more thing and then Watch Dogs came out and everyone just exploded because people love new exciting you know ISPs and and people love to see new ideas coming in and it's not just you know here's the new third part of whatever 15th part of infamous as much as people like these kind of games i think they're going to have to steer a little bit more towards the the system selling unique exclusive titles that people want to see so yeah i think the console war is going into the next round this year at e3 one more thing to mention they're not going to have a press conference same as nintendo but hopefully they're going to be there and hopefully something is going to happen in the end i'm talking obviously about valve valve the steam box it now has been delayed i think up to 2015 it was supposed to come out this year there seem to be some issues going on with that however i hope that just valve generally establishes themselves a bit more at e3 as a proper game distributor and you know putting themselves to eye level with all the consoles because they are the pc is on the rise and you can feel it everywhere you go people are not that passionate about the consoles anymore because the accessories are more expensive the games are more expensive the hardware doesn't deliver what it promised i can see so many comments on various websites where people say look i'm gonna switch over to the pc yeah i'll have to pay 300 pounds more to get a proper pc but then it will do everything i want to and i don't have to make a compromise basically so i I hope that Valve will be there, that they will kind of announce maybe or take it to the next level, the Steam box, and that we can have a look at what they are up to and where they're going. So yeah, we can put them just on an equal playing field with Microsoft and with Nintendo and with Sony and all these guys are kind of playing. So you can see it's like a chessboard 
who's gonna make the next move and where we're going with this. For me, it's majorly exciting. I love that kind of stuff. So that's my contribution as a preview for this year's E3. Guys, leave me a comment in the comment section underneath what you think, what are you excited about? Probably by the point you're seeing this, E3 is already on the run. We are only one day away at the moment. It's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to have all the press conferences tomorrow evening uh, at London time because I'm here in London. So let me know what you guys think. What are you excited about? What is the game that you guys want to see at this year's E3? Uh, I thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do more videos around E3 if I find the time. If not, I won't. Anyway, I thank you very much uh, for watching. And uh, I love you guys. And i see you guys next time. Bye.